My name is Josh Miller. I own Riverstone Kennels, and I've been training gun dogs for more than 16 years. I have field trialed, I've hunt tested, but at the end of the day, I'm a duck hunter. You might find that the duck in our Duck Dogs podcast is spelt uniquely. The UK stands for my British labs. I love my British labs. I love what they offer me, both as a part of my family and the high motor in the field. As you're going to find, I have some pretty special dogs. Follow along in our podcast series here as we talk about both in the field hunting and in the field training situations that will hopefully help you progress with your dog at home. Welcome back to Duck Dogs, everybody. I'm your host, Josh Miller. And before we get going, as always, we need to thank our wonderful partners that make this show possible. So thank you to Yukonuba. Yukonuba is uh, our presenting sponsor. Yukonuba Premium Performance Sport 3020 is the blend of food that we feed our dogs here at the kennel. And we cannot say enough good things about it from coat to energy level to recovery to teeth. Just across the board, we are very happy. www.yukonuba.com. Also, thank you to Gundog Supply. Gundog Supply is your one-stop shop for all of your hunting and training needs for your dog. Great product selection, great people, great customer service. You will not be disappointed. www.gundogsupply.com Also, thank you to Kent Cartridge. Kent Cartridge is our shotgun shell of choice. Uh, We have a lot of options in the field during the fall which is why we choose Kent, but we also uh, really don't have a lot of options when it comes to blanks, but Kent has you covered. So if you need blanks for your training season, www.kentcartridge.com. Also, thank you to Lucky Duck. Lucky Duck is your five-star crash test rated kennel, both in the intermediate and in the large size. So no matter how big or small your gun dog is, you can be sure that they're traveling as safe as they possibly can. www.luckyduck.com. Also, thank you to Sitka Gear. Sitka Gear is your premium option for outdoor clothing, whether it is gearing up for turkey season here in the spring, uh, looking forward to the fall, getting out with our dogs again, or your everyday wear. It will keep you in the field more comfortable for longer. www.sitkagear.com. And last but not least, thank you to Retriever Roadmap. Retriever Roadmap is your go-to option for online training. So training your own gun dog at home. It will give you the guidance with a step-by-step video-based library to get you to your goal with a great community of people to help you and encourage you along the way. Uh, Strike teams to give you opportunities to train in your area with other people, uh, new places, new equipment. It's just a fantastic community. And right now, We have our spring training promotion to where you can get into the program with the $200 initiation fee completely waived. So make sure you get in there while you can. Uh, There's still a a little bit of time here, a few weeks left from today, that uh, it will be available. So make sure you go get your membership now so you can get in on that deal. www.retrieverroadmap.com Well, I hope everyone is having a great start to your week, a great start to your day. Uh, I am. Well, so I think last week I said that uh, I think this this uh, episode was half presented by uh, Benadryl allergy. Uh, this one is is uh, presented by Zyrtec because I have found that Zyrtec is way more effective for me uh, than the Benadryl allergy was. So I feel uh, way better. You can probably still tell I'm a little scratchy, a little stuffy, but overall, way better. So I'm really happy. So Zyrtec. Fun fact. So thank you, Carlos Flores, for uh, for putting me onto that as I was out in Connecticut here this uh, last week and giving a seminar. Uh, we'll touch on that here in just a second. But I want to uh, invite my guest for today, which is my beautiful wife, Whitney. And um, we have... Uh, she has no idea what we're going to talk oh, about today. I'm actually so nervous. I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm never nervous for these and I'm so nervous. And it's because you're a planner. And I've not told well, you what it is we're talking about today. I'm a planner for the podcast for sure because I want to like prep myself and I have no idea what you're going to throw at me. Yeah, so I'm, I'm throwing you out of your comfort zone. <laughs> yeah. It's a great thing. It's called growth, isn't it? Yeah, personal growth. Personal right? growth. Fantastic. Um, so uh, before we do that, uh, we, we're going to settle something. And uh, I would love some messages you know, from people that are listening because um, – I have like this has to be a topic that more people struggle with than just you and I. Oh boy. Okay, so so here's the deal, everyone. Um, I'm I have a very strong opinion of this. Okay? <laughs> uh, 
Leftovers are a complete oh. waste of time. <laughs> leftovers are a complete <laughs> waste of time to actually bring the leftovers okay. home from the restaurant. Okay. Now, Whitney always <laughs> wants to bring leftovers home. Always. And I understand you paid for the food. You want to be respectful. You want to take it all home. But she's literally crying laughing right now. Oh, my right gosh. Now. This um, is so funny. But she never eats it. I, actually, I do. You just don't know it. Okay. Prime example. <laughs> this this morning. So last night, uh, we went out and we took our newest employee, uh, Zach, who I cannot wait for you guys to uh, get introduced to Zach. Just a great guy with a great background and a great story and has done a great job with his personal dog. And I'm really excited to have him as a part of the team. But yesterday was uh, was his first day. And so we took him out to dinner. And Whitney took the kids from dinner mm-hmm. and Zach and I just kind of, you know, got to have a drink and, you know, spend some, a little more quality time together last night, which was great. But she took my truck. Well, I have no idea what was in that box. It was my delicious steak wrap. It, it <laughs> smelt like an olive garden when I got in my truck this morning. Oh, yeah. It was so garlicky oh. and it was so disgusting smelling. And... As you guys can probably imagine, I'm kind of particular about the way that my truck is, whether it's the way that it's clean, the way mm-hmm. that it's presented, the way that it smells is a big deal to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's disgusting. And so there's no reason. There's no reason to bring a leftover home because it doesn't get well, eaten. So to be And here here <laughs> no, let me finish now because I have another part of this. Okay. Good. So if Good. you bring a leftover home, mm-hmm. if you do not intend to eat it cold, mm. I believe that you are compromising the integrity in which that meal was meant to be eaten. Okay, so a burger to mm-hmm. warm to warm a burger up in the microwave after it's already been cooked to the proper temperature and the proper <laughs> eating you know, desire. Now you have completely comp- so it's comp- it's a waste of time. And I just I I'm a I'm an anti leftover guy. Uh, really, I would have never guessed. Oh my, so if, if anyone this is actually here could so funny. smell the inside of my truck this right is actually now, they'd be so on my funny. Side. So I was taking the kids to school this morning, and Josh is getting in his truck, and our cars are were parked side by side. And I'm like, you know, like the kids and I are like listening to um, Forrest's song, um, Good Day. You know, we're like all jacked up. You know, we're going to have a great day today listening to the Forrest song. <laughs> and, um, and literally I look over, and Josh is, the look on his face was literally priceless as all of a sudden, all four windows in his truck get rolled down, and the look on his face was completely priceless. And I was gonna walk into the office today with that song blaring and be like, "Hey guys, we're gonna have a great day today." So what's fair is if you have never listened to Forrest Frank, mm-hmm. great. Like it, oh, it was oh actually some of my vibe music yeah. in the mornings, especially down in Missouri at the Pheasant Ranch when I had a very routine, a very. Um, a routine of first off, just you know, guys know my brain is like working at half speed today. I have no idea why. It just it just is. Um but um it's it's just like it was part of my routine. I love the you know, the music, I love the vibe. Okay, so mm-hmm. I, I, I can appreciate the vibe, but you can you can probably understand how my vibe went <laughs> when I get in my truck and have that oh, I'm so enormous sorry. odor smack so me in the face. As a as a mom bringing home her two tornadoes. Um, oh, I honestly, I honestly thought that I had forgot the leftovers at the table last night. Like I Which literally did <laughs> in the first place. Okay. It literally had crossed my mind. I was like, dang it. Forgot the leftovers. And there they were. They weren't left at the table. They were just left in your truck. So I sincerely apologize. I will pay for your truck to get detailed. Okay. Well, Fair enough. <laughs> oh, thanks. So we know that that's not going to happen. Um, so, but a little tip for those of you, uh, white tail hunters that are out there. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of you guys have Ozonics machines, right? As, as do I, which are ozone machines. We'd bring in the field. I will put my Ozonics mm-hmm. in my truck overnight on full blast and it will smell fresh as a daisy the next morning, but it's just irritating that I have to do it in the first place. So that also, is my, that's Also, don't my drive with rain. your Ozonics going. If you think it's a good idea, don't do it. Do it when you're not driving. It could knock you out. <laughs> so we have a really good friend of ours named uh, Dylan. And, uh, you know, they have the the plug-in Ozonics for your 
cigarette charger. And I, I don't think Ozonix actually has one, but I think like, um, I can't remember the brands off the mm-hmm. top of my head. Somebody out there is sure like, you can Google it. Yeah. Somebody out there is like talking <clears> to their <throat> screen right now going like, you idiot. It's this, it's this, it's For scent. Sure. It's not scent killer or scent. Yeah. Scent lock. Maybe, oh. maybe scent. I don't know. Maybe. maybe. Um, anyway, uh, he asked me how I like mine. I was like, yeah, I really like it. Um, I don't have one, a plug in, but I have the full unit. And so he got the plug in one and, uh, you know, I don't know, month later, you know, we, we talked to each other and it came up and I was like, how do you like it? He's like, man, like I, I hate it. I stopped using it. I was like, how could you possibly hate this? Right? Like the little plug in ozone is just like, it freshens your car up. And he's like, man, I get sick when I'm using it. And I'm like, <laughs> you're driving with the Ozonics on in your car. And he's like, yeah, like it's, it's literally made to kill oxygen. <laughs> like, like no kidding. You're feeling sick. Oh my gosh. And so we had a good laugh about it anyway. Um, you know what though? It doesn't kill flies. Isn't that so weird? Or I mean, like I've had so many flies in my car and used it and they're still alive flying around the next day. I, I, weird. I, I don't know Just enough weird. about it to know why that happens. I'm sorry. Dang it. Um, so anyway, anyways, little rant. There we go. Out of the way. Welcome to the Millers. Yeah, that's right. We are the Millers. <laughs> that's right. Um, all right. So uh, what I want to get into uh, today with you is we, first off, have, I, I loved the little mini series we just did, which I'm going to guess you don't listen to the podcast. Because I'm you so hear my sorry. Voice <laughs> enough. Um, but we just did this little, little podcast series, mini series, what I call it on, you know, mindset of different people. So we had Ben Commodore who had, you know, he's professional guide hunts, you know, a tremendous number of days a year, uh, to Carlos Flores, who's a professional trainer, uh, out on the East coast. And then we went, you know, Greg Sigorski, who is a hunter and actually lives in a very populated area of Atlanta and how, and owns two dogs and how those, those different people in different environments and different um, situations, how their mindsets of how they're going to attack the training season all differ so much. And there's a point of this, all you guys that, you know, if you've listened to the series of why we did this is because we still once in a while get people that are like, like through retrieval roadmap, right? That, you know, they come into it. They're like, you know, I want a day by day uh, training, you know, program. As far as like, tell me what to do on day one and then day two and then day three and then day four. And, and and I'm sorry, like that will never come. And, and if, if you're looking for that, like we're not the right program for you, but here's why I'm going to challenge you. If you are looking for that is how in the world can I tell you a day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, when one, I don't know you two, I don't know what kind of property you have to work with. Three, I don't know what kind of tools you you currently have or are willing to get. Four, I don't know. You kind of see where I'm going with this? There, there are too many variables that come up. One thing that I had never thought about for, uh, for Ben up in uh, Canada. Ben told us he basically has four months to work, period, because of the weather that he has up there. He has about four months that he can work his dogs, period. Greg Sigorski down in Atlanta, has 12 months that he can work his dogs. Now, what's the difference? Greg gets creative and and uses like the uh, little yard area of a church, and that's that's where he gets the majority of his training done. Ben has hundreds and thousands of acres that he can go run his dogs on because of what he has access to up by him, right? So there's such a difference there. And then let's not like... You want to get into your personal life, mm-hmm. right? So Greg has a a very uh, a consistent, busy job. So he fits it in when he can, early mornings, late evenings. Carlos is a professional trainer. So he gets to bring his dogs every single day and has the opportunity to get them, whether it's birds, whether it's equipment, whether what have you. Ben has a brand new baby and... You know, mm-hmm. you and I specifically understand what that looks like. And so there are so many variables mm-hmm. across the board, not to mention what is like, what is your dog? Mm-hmm. Is your dog a very well uh, bred Labrador? 
Is your dog a not well-bred mixed breed mutt that you're hoping that you can get to do something? Is your dog a, you know, like, is your dog a, a short hair that you mm-hmm. want to make in a, a duck dog? There's, there are too many variables, you guys. There's well, just, there's no way to go uh, day one, two, three, four, five, six. And, um, and go ahead. I mean, well, I was going to say training's already stressful, right? Like you already, like it can already be stressful. And when you're now breaking it down from day to day to day, like that just adds so much more pressure on you, which then puts the pressure onto your dog. And you're like, you're just asking to be stressed out every single day if you don't hit that day to day mark. Well, and I understand the wanting clarity as mm-hmm. far as like, I'm new to this. Tell me what to do on day one. I mm-hmm. totally get that. Um, but one, okay. So I kind of look at it like this too. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about learning to read your dog and learning to understand that relationship and understand that. Um, I look at it as in when, so I type in the direction to my destination very often. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when I'm following the GPS, like I'm not understanding the roads. I'm not understanding, you know, landmarks. I'm not, not nearly like I would if I'm like, I need to remember, you know, this road on the way back. I'm taking it down, being more observant. If it's day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, right? I just don't believe that you are reading the situation, becoming a better handler and a better trainer through that. So when do I move on? Read the dog and understand it. When do I go back a step? Read the dog and understand it, Right. You, you will become a much better trainer and handler by going through, hey, here's a program. I need to go at my dog's pace. I need to go at my pace as a person. What do I have access to? What do I have the time for? What do I have the bandwidth for, right? There, there are just so many variables, you guys. Like if, if I took every one of my personal dogs and said, I'm going to go you know, from you know, this day to 365 days from now, they all start the same. They all better finish on that day the same way. There's no way they all turn out as well as they have. Mm-hmm. There's just no way. Mm-hmm. So, um, so where I'm going with this is we've been talking a lot about you control what you can control. So the mindset of each one of these guys we talked to, you know, talked to, they control what they can control and they make the most out of what they have. Okay. So Greg with his schedule is different than Carlos with his schedule, which is different than Ben with his schedule but they're both progressing in the manner of which they can given what they have. So they're controlling what they can control. Ben can't control the weather up by him, but he can control in those four months that he's going to put the pedal to the metal and he's going to make the most out of it. So he's preparing very diligently. What do I need to do in these four months to capitalize and capture that time? Just like Greg is playing very differently because he's more like, okay, I only get to train on, you know, this grand property, you know, once every two weeks. So you know, I'm making that part up because I don't recall exactly, but I have this great property I can train on, but I don't have access to it all the time. So what do I have to do in the meantime with my small property to then make it to where when I get the opportunity on the big property accounts? So I want to transition that into a little bit on the puppy side because it's, it's it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing I think to talk about because here's mm-hmm. what is a little bit head scratching, actually a lot of bit head scratching to me. Um, but I love your take on it because you're very, you're very um, go with the flow. Mm-hmm. You're you're very, um, I think, forgiving of people. Where like I'm a little more like, come on, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. See, my, my zero tech is like, oh. it's, it's doing good with that, like 100%. Um, so I have listened in the background mm-hmm. to conversations that you have had you know, with clients, you've had with people, and you've had. And this is going to sound silly to a lot of people, mm-hmm. but it's the truth. Mm-hmm. I believe there are people that do not understand the dog side of it as far as I don't I don't think people understand you can't control how many males and females come out of a litter. Mm-hmm. Sounds silly <laughs> to most people, but mm-hmm. to me, again, I, like, and you're going to correct me if I'm wrong on this, but yeah. this is just like me hearing the conversations, right? Yeah. You can't control all the time 
mm-hmm. whether it's black or yellow. Right. Right? Yeah. You can't, like, there are so many things you can't control. Now, what you can control Mm -hmm. is you can control your communication. Mm -hmm. You can control, like, there are certainly things you can control. Yeah. But um, can you talk a little bit about that side of it? I think that's really interesting Mm -hmm. as far as, like, controlling what you can control and then the other side, what you can't control. For sure. So I, like you said, I can control my communication. And I do that. In multiple ways, I have the website that I keep updated. I have pup dates that I send out. I have emails that I send out. And I tell everyone I'm always open to communicating, whether it's on email or a phone call. Like, you reach out to me um, just because when I look at my reservation list, I have a lot of people on there. And honestly, like, I would love to be able to reach out to you and, like, just give you updates and, you know, know where you're at. But, like, in all honesty, like you've got to reach out to me um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of life changes that happen with people and I just can't keep up with everyone, mm-hmm. obviously, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so communication, I can control that. I can control my breedings to an extent, right? Like I can have planned breedings on our website. You see them all listed out. But when is a female going to come into heat? She could be early. She could be late. Is the breeding going to take? Um, How many puppies are going to be in the litter? How many males versus females? Blacks versus yellows? And I can control the colors to an extent. The only color of a litter that I can guarantee is either mixed black and yellow or all yellow. I cannot ever guarantee myself, as of right now, um, an all black litter. And why is that? Because I do not have a sire that is dominant black. So solo, bud, and strike, they all carry the black and yellow color. And I know that through my genetic testing. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way to find that out, right? Like, obviously, I'm I'm trying to be an uneducated (laughs) host here, right? So so you you don't know that when you get, when you bring one of these dogs in from overseas, right? right? And they, they make the team and go Mm -hmm. through all all the stuff, right? Like you don't know that until the genetic testing is done. For sure. Yep. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Um, And part of that is on me. I'd say a big part of it because I have been so adamant that color is the last priority. Mm -hmm. I want to have great dogs. Mm -hmm. So I need to have the great dog that has the temperament, Mm -hmm. that has the health, that has the, the, drive level that has the trainability mm-hmm. level that proves it to me that you are a percent of a percent you are that special dog mm-hmm. and after that okay now we figure out are you black dominant or not and it right. just so happens that specifically the three black boys that we have right black dogs that we have right now is that they are that yellow mm-hmm. carrier right yes and so that is why you can't right now as it says today. Mm-hmm. That's why you can't. That's why I can't that. guarantee that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so when someone, <laughs> sorry, no, you're good. So when someone is very particular, it has to be a black male or else, right? Like, yeah, it's hard. It in um, this situation, like you are literally giving me something so little to work with because, like, all the variables, right? Like, we and we take our reservations differently. We take them based on sex and color rather than by litter because honestly. Oh my gosh, like when then you take it by litter and you're really putting all your eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. Where I love to have the open conversations of, hey, your name's coming up. These are the litters that I want to look at for you. And we keep it open ended until the litter is born and until you accept that puppy offer. Like, I want to keep everything open ended because there are so, like we said, there's so many variables you just don't know. And the last thing that I want to do is call you and say, I don't have a puppy from that litter, Hmm. which still can definitely happen for me, right? But I try to minimize it by keeping my options open. The other part that I love about that too is that, so someone meets us, Mm -hmm. whether they come out of the kennel or not, you know, they they put a deposit down, you tell them, hey, you're coming up, Mm -hmm. you're for a yellow male, Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're like, as we look forward to this, you're going to have, a couple of these options. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one, like from a, because we do have such a, a demand, mm-hmm. 
which I would hope speaks to that we're doing a good job. Mm-hmm. Um, but because we have that demand, if, if we talked about litters when you put the deposit down a year and a half beforehand, mm-hmm. like the girls may not even be still breeding. You know, the right. girls that we're using now mm-hmm. may be on their last litter, mm-hmm. may not be there. So it's a moot point to talk about them mm-hmm. because they may not be involved. But if you come up and are like, hey, Whitney, you're coming up on the list. You're, you know, on a yellow male. Here are the litters mm-hmm. that, you know, have the chance to have that yellow male. Mm-hmm. Why don't you, if you have time, come out. Meet the the sires, talk it over. You know, let's talk about these these particular females. See, like, let's pick. We you know maybe one or two of these litters that might make sense to you. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. And then when it comes up, like you feel involved in this because you yeah. have been a part of the process of finding. Yes, I like this. I like this female. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of times it's like ah, oh, like these two or these three boys. I'd be mm-hmm. happy with that. Anyone. You know, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, but what what's what's funny to me is when. Okay, and, and I think this comes down to life situations at home. For sure. And all of a sudden, people start getting, like, anxious. Of like, yeah. Like, why haven't I gotten a puppy yet? Yeah. Well, you want the laundry list? <laughs> yeah. Right? Now, yeah. you come in here, and we have people that do this, and they're like, look, sex doesn't matter to me. Color doesn't matter to me. I'll mm-hmm. put my name on all four. Mm-hmm. All four lists. Black male, black female, yellow male, yellow female. Well, yeah. Like, you're going to get a puppy offer way faster than someone says it has to be a Black male oh out gosh. of strike. Well, okay, so perfect example. I've had 60-some puppies, and out of those 60, you guys, out of those 60, 40 puppies were black males. Seven 40 were yellow males. Oh, my gosh. Like, do you want to talk about, like, massive stress put on me? Like, that is a complete uncontrollable mm-hmm. in my situation because those are coming from mixed colored litters they're coming from mixed colored litters oh my gosh like and i like now i'm like not wanting like now josh and i have to sit down and we say okay who are the yellow females that are supposed to be coming into heat do we have all the boxes checked because first we look at genetics because that's a really easy one to rule out instantly for breeding pairings um, then we look at pedigrees and then we look at colors and it's like, we pray that we've got a yellow female coming up that we can breed to a yellow male. Mm-hmm. So I'm guaranteed a litter of all yellow, but just cause I'm going to guarantee a litter of all yellow, does it fit the temperament you want? Because mm-hmm. is it going to be a therapy litter? Is it going to be a high drive litter or is it going to be a middle of the road temperament litter? Like it's so difficult and um, it's, I think it's just hard for people to understand like everything that goes on behind the scenes and just, just like that, like how many variables, like 40 black male puppies. Out of 60 oh puppies totals, we're not just talking just oh. the boys, right? We're talking 60 puppies, 60 puppies total, 60 puppies, <laughs> Yeah. 40 of them were so black, males. 40 of them were black males. Seven of them were yellow males. 12 or yellow females and whatever the math adds up to for black females. So, Oh my gosh. A, a couple takeaways from this. Yeah. One, it sounds like if you're interested in a river stone puppy, <laughs> and you're looking for a black male, probably wouldn't be a terrible time to get on Reach the list out because, to me. <laughs> because you're probably going to be expedited as far well, as you know, your weight. So time. yeah, can, I want to touch yep, on that really quick. Okay. So then I go to my um, reservation list and you, I will reach out to you like four to six months before I think I have a puppy offer for you because that way let's start talking. Let's really get into the nitty gritty. Who do you like as breeding pairings? Let's talk about temperaments and let's see what happens. Okay, so that email usually goes out around December for my spring litters. March rolls around. It's an election year. People are being pretty conservative on their spending. and It is really interesting how those trends work out. Oh my gosh, big time. And then um, like... People are having babies. A lot of people are changing jobs. People are moving. I don't know. People are getting ill. Like, bless them. I hope they feel better. Mm -hmm. Like, there's then, so from December to March, I had so many things change just on my reservation list. So if you reach out to me, you know, and I always say, let's not talk about your reservation number. Let's talk about the timeline I gave you. Because my timeline, honestly, I think I do a pretty dang good job at that. Um, a year and a half to two years or a year to a year and a half. Um, but you know, someone could reach out to me and be like, well, where am I on the list? And say your number 
I own 78 on my black male list. Well, now I've had 40 puppies. Right. And guess what? Not all 40 people ahead of you have accepted that puppy offer because now they have all these life changes. So now I've pa- I've had 30 people pass on puppy offers. And when, when you say pass, it's like, hey, not right now. Not right now. Let we'll me be- wait until later 2024. Mm-hmm. Let me wait until spring of 2025. And so um, when I have these puppies on the ground and people are anxiously waiting and wanting a puppy update, honestly, sometimes it's so hard. And I know I give such a vague answer because to be honest, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's going to be born in the next two weeks and where you're going to be. And so I, I feel like, and honestly, it's probably on me. I could do maybe do a better job on communication, just being like, hey, sometimes I've got to be up in limbo in order for me to give you an answer. But honestly, like, things change so much from day to day to day. So, like, for instance, let me give you, like, a really, so, like, my window right now, I bred Willow to strike. And I wed, I bred Willow to Bud last year. Phenomenal litter. But I really, really, really need strike breedings. Everything like matched up perfectly with this breeding. I don't know if she's pregnant yet. But I now have Benelli that needs to be bred. And so now I'm like, I wish I knew if Willow was pregnant to know who, if I breed Benelli to now Bud or strike. You know, they're like... Does that make any sense at all? Like when I'm coming, when now I'm looking at my breeding pairings again, who do I need another litter from strike or bud? Because I, I could really use both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think one of the things that, that I take away as we talk about all this stuff that is it's confusing. Well, <laughs> I mean, if I'm playing uneducated host, yeah, I do think it's confusing. Um, since I walk through it day to day with oh you, gosh. okay. It's yeah. not, but, um, so Somebody could be sitting out there and be like, well, that sounds like you just need to breed a yellow and a yellow and get yellows, Ugh. right? Here's the deal. I, like, I am very firm on this. Mm-hmm. You, you agree. Yeah. We yeah, are very we firm are. on this. Okay. We are not breeding for color. Mm-hmm. Like, we are breeding the best dogs that we possibly can pr- produce. Mm-hmm. We are not going to breed just for color. And, and that's where, to me, I have been very adamant on that. Because when you breed just for color, Mm -hmm. other things go out the window. If we said, hey, we're going to pair, you know, Brock and Molly together just because they're yellows and Mm -hmm. we need the yellows, okay? We -hmm. are now looking at that as a transactional pairing. Mm -hmm. We are just doing it to satisfy people that that want a color. Mm -hmm. And we are not doing it because we believe that it is the best pairing to produce the best puppies. Yeah. And that is so disingenuous to what we are actually trying to do from the authenticity side of we have said this from day one, Mm -hmm. that we are trying to produce the absolute best puppies, the absolute healthiest puppies, the best puppies we can produce. We are not going to start thinking about color now. 100%. And this is like when you start talking about uh, like a testing time, this is probably the most most testing we've had Mm -hmm. to stay true to that. Yeah. Because it is tempting you know, from, yeah. uh, from a business side, especially when you're getting like the phone calls, this is what I mean. Like you never know what's going on in somebody's life. Mm-hmm. Right. So we got, we had somebody the other day that, that called me and was like, man, like, I'm just like, I, I'm not understanding why I haven't got a puppy offer. And I'm like, okay, like, and normally this is your phone call, but, mm-hmm. yeah, but you were mm-hmm. doing something right. And, uh, I'm like, well, talk me through it. It's like, well, like, you know, we, we've seen these litters and we've seen them go through and we should have been up there by now. Bop, 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 bop. Okay. And I just let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go. And, um, I finally just got to a point that I was like, look, like, and you know, like he has specifically talked about, like, I, like, I just like, we, we would have loved to have one of the solo puppies. And I'm like, okay, get done with it. I was like, well, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have loved to have one of the solo right. puppies. Because yeah. solo puppies are absolute fire breathers, mm-hmm. right? Like if you guys, uh, if you listen to the the uh, story with Greg and how Ember for him, he loves and adores Ember, but he made the comment in there that he wouldn't, he doesn't believe that they would have been successful with Ember if they didn't have Blaze first. Mm-hmm. And with their lifestyle and his training dedication, everything else, like they, she is a fire breather. These soul pups are fire breathers. They're, they're great fits for people that want fire breathers. This mm-hmm. individual has three kids at home. He works a pretty intense job. He's not going to hunt this dog a lot. He's not going to train this dog a lot. He loves the look of solo. That's great. <laughs> but because he is gorgeous, right? Hard, <laughs> hard not to like that, but not the right fit. For sure. Right? So, okay. 
want, we just give you a puppy to appease you and have a puppy and then what? And then six you call mo- us six months from now, you call us and you're mad and you're frustrated yeah. because like this puppy's like all over the place and off the walls and you're like, yeah, like that's like, so where I'm going with this and, and then too, okay, so then, and then the conversation goes and, um, I don't have a great relationship, you know, with this individual, but I've kind of gotten to a point that I've just, I've kind of been blunt about more and more things. I think, you know, coming with my old age, um, okay. my, my, my old age of 35, um, I've just, like, I just got to a point. I was like, man, like what is going on? This isn't about the dog. Mm-hmm. This isn't about the puppy. What mm-hmm. is going on? And he's like, man, like, I'm just like, I mean, a stressful time at work and I'm just, I'm sick of hearing the family ask about when the dog's coming. Mm-hmm. Okay. That is it. That is the root of this. Yeah. It wasn't the dog. It wasn't the wait time. It wasn't, it wasn't anything. You were just sick of, of something. You had a bad day at work and I was the easy person for you to call and blow steam off at because you had to, you had to do it to somebody. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and this is where the customer relationship part mm-hmm. comes into play. But like this to me is where like there's more of that that happens mm-hmm. than I think what people would realize. Like from like if you spent you know a year with us, mm-hmm. like you know the this is an emotional thing mm-hmm. for a lot of people, and so emotions get involved. So you get anxious, you get nervous, you get frustrated, you get excited, you get you know mm-hmm. you get emphatic, you get like like the puppy pickup day, best day in the world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But there's, there's obviously, you know, the hurdle that kind of comes with that. So f- getting somebody the right dog oh my gosh. is so much more important than just getting them a dog. And this is where, to me, I think we're here going with a professional breeder in yourself mm-hmm. that has a number of different stud dogs for a reason, mm-hmm. that has a number of different litters for a reason, mm-hmm. and it is to find what the best fit for you is. Yeah. If you go to a breeder and they have one litter of puppies, and that is what you have to choose from, I don't care if you get quote-unquote, and I'm using like very sarcastic air quotes, pick <laughs> of the litter. I don't care yeah. if you have pick of the litter, right? That is what like that is your option. Is that the right fit for you or not? Mm-hmm. Like, that's up for you to decide. Mm-hmm. But I think when you go there and you see these little balls of fur, you're going to convince yourself pretty quickly yeah. this is the right fit and use whatever rose colored glasses you got to look through because nobody goes to quote unquote, again, sarcastic air quotes, <laughs> just look at puppies. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. We're just going to look. No, you're not. You're going home with one. Yeah. Right. When I take it so personally, right? Like I want, I genuinely want to truly pair you with the absolute best that I possibly can. Like I care so deeply about what you want to do with that puppy, how they're going to be. Too much. I, I do like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, it's stressful figuring out who I'm going to place the puppies to because I truly like, this is a huge commitment for these families. And I want to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm handing you the healthiest, most adaptable, most successful puppy for what you want to do. And um, it was really interesting. I was talking to a lady the other day, and she has a, a like a deadly peanut allergy. And I was a what peanut allergy? Peanut. Yes. <laughs> I, I heard something else. Like I, I don't. I don't know. So, I, I, I. I'm sorry. That's that's funny. <laughs> that it's. I I heard something else. I don't know if everybody child. else heard it. I, I heard something else. I was like, huh. That's um, an interesting allergic. Okay, go ahead. Okay, peanut allergy. Sorry. Peanut. Um, and I was I was walking her through why I would choose Bud as a sire of her person. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. That, was that old age. <laughs> that old age is really messing with your hearing too. Oh um, but here's the deal. So like I go so okay, in re- depth repeat, with I'm this. sorry. Repeat what you said. I was oh so distracted. Gosh, Joshua. Okay. I was on the phone with a lady mm-hmm. the other day and she wanted to talk about the breeding program mm-hmm. in depth because she has a peanut allergy. <laughs> and... Um, and I was going through like our sires and who I would pick for her. And I said, I would, if you put down a deposit, I would say Bud because his puppies have proven to be therapy dogs and search and rescue dogs. What? Can Why I call time out? Why? I, I, no, I'm not laughing about the same thing. I think this is so interesting. I actually love this story. You, you might be getting this, but like what in the world does a peanut allergy have to do with picking a dog up? 
because she need, she's training this dog to detect this. Got like it. a detection dog for Got her, it. like a therapy dog Got for it. her. Sorry, that was actually a massive part well, of the story. I was like, story. what in the world? Like, <laughs> like I have a peanut allergy. I need the right, you know, need. You okay, to, so yeah. she's going to put it through training. I'm sorry. Okay. That was it really, I really should have said that. Um, So I told her, bud, for these reasons, therapy dog plus search and rescue. Like, you want to talk about a dog that produces puppies that are like really, really, really in tune to what you need. And that's great. So we picked out Bud. And then I said, but let's take it one step further. Let's talk about a puppy in the litter. What puppy would I pick for you? And I said, it's going to be the puppy that I constantly notice is sitting there looking at me. The one that's following me around. The observant puppy. Because that's what you need. You don't need the puppy that is independent. Going and exploring. Like the outgoing puppy. Because which that's, a lot of hunters would want. Which a lot of hunters would want. So like we talk about like the breeding pairings and the puppies within, but like that is honestly like how in depth I get when I'm placing these puppies and when I'm looking and doing my observations with the puppy in the litter. Like I pour my heart and soul into this because it's such a massive impact on your family when you bring that puppy home. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting story. Mm -hmm. it, and it goes to show too that like when you are dealing with you know, people on your reservation list. Yeah. It is all over the board. It'd oh be my like, gosh. Yes, it's wild. The vast majority of people yeah. are hunters. Yeah. They want a great hunting companion that is a great family member. Mm -hmm. The vast majority. Mm -hmm. But you have like Bud specifically. Mm -hmm. Search and rescue. Yeah. Cadaver dogs. Yeah. Right. That have been successfully finding people in earthquakes. Mm -hmm. Mind blowing. Um, you know, all the way to, you know, what, what you know, do you want a Hunt? TSA dog? Do you yeah. want a hunting dog? Do you want like, we have, we have bud puppies running in field trials right now. Literally that kind of an extreme across yeah. board, all of those things. Right. And, um, therapy dogs. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's unbelievable the versatility that these puppies can do, but mm -hmm. what you are, okay. Again, not saying that a solo puppy couldn't do that, but if I'm looking at what is the right dog for you, right. If you just wanted a specific color, and a specific look, like you can't just go off that. No. Right. Like I had, um, oh my goodness, I'm going to forget the gentleman's name that I talked to. Michael Hicks. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. They got a solo puppy. Yeah. Okay. Um, first off, great. Oh my gosh. Dude. Amazing. Really. I wish I could have spent more time with you oh my uh, gosh, that morning yes. because I just like, I, he's one of those guys I really clicked with. Yeah. Um, Really would love, Michael, if you're listening to this, like, really enjoyed our time together, Oh, my dude. gosh, yes. Um, but, so, one of the things I said to, to you know, to him is, mm -hmm. like, because this was a solo Emma, Emma yep. puppy. Yep, yep. Because so I was like, you know what you're getting here, right? And he was like, oh, yeah. And he was <laughs> he was enthusiastic about it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's going to be somebody that embraces that this is going to be a fire breather. It's going to be a, a high motor, a high drive, a high, and... um you know, his background mm -hmm. allowed him to say, I'm ready for something like this. And I mm -hmm. know what I'm getting into and I know I'm going to be successful. And I know I have to be patient. I know I have to like all the things he, he's the right person to get a dog like that. Yeah. Right. But we have a lot of people that come and solo in particular, like he is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So people seem like, Oh, I just, I love that. Like, I'm like, yeah, so do I, but like not the right fit. Yeah. Right. And so again, just like going back to controlling what you can control. So like coming full circle on, on mm -hmm. the, the comment here, um, coming full circle, controlling what you can control. Yeah. Like, so for you as, as a breeder, mm -hmm. you're controlling what you can control as far as you're not going to deviate and be unauthentic yeah. and breed for color. You're controlling what you can control by producing the best puppies you possibly can. Yeah. If they come out 40 out of 60 are black males, <laughs> they come out 40 or 60 and black males. And right. you then take that mm -hmm. and you make lemonade out of lemons. Yeah. And you say, how do we, you know, how do we proceed forward? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, to me, I would respect that so much more than you trying to switch lanes and have have yellows just to have yellows. Yeah. Right. And so again, controlling what you can control from a customer standpoint, you know, what I would say is control. You already controlled what you could control. Mm -hmm. You got with the right breeder mm -hmm. that is doing the right things 
And in the long term, you will be happy mm -hmm. because you made that route. Like you can't control all the things that Whitney can't control. You can't control that time. You can't control the people in front of you if they didn't take a puppy. Right. And all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I was expecting a year and a half and it took seven months, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, control what you can control. Yeah. Right? Trust the process. Yeah. Honestly, just trust the Riverstone process. Well, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we talk about it so much from training. Obviously, we talk way more about training than we do puppies yeah, mm -hmm. on this. But um, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting business peek behind the curtain mm -hmm. because this is something that you know most people would never get to see they never get to see this side of it you know they get to come play with the puppies and it's so fun it's all great you can go out in the yard and all the puppies mm -hmm. are playing and the family's having a great time and then of course you pick the puppy up but you don't see that process between deposit mm -hmm. to pickup mm -hmm. and there's a tremendous amount that goes on there behind the scenes that um again can, you know, it's being done in your case, mm -hmm. what I believe is the right way, which is you don't deviate from what made you great. Mm -hmm. you, you, you do, you, even though you're throwing a curveball right now specifically, Yeah, it doesn't change who you are. Right. Right. And that's the definition of authenticity. Mm -hmm. That is it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, you know, what I just, I, I just have so much uh your know, respect for that and i just mm -hmm. like i've seen i've seen you want to pull your hair out and i've seen you have to have these conversations with people that don't quite understand it mm -hmm. and you know for me that's why i wanted to have this conversation is like again we're talking so much about mindset of training mindset of going into the training season and mindset how you attack how you get how you get the most out of your dog you know this, this spring and summer but this is where it all starts yeah, and it all it, starts with the right puppy. And and this is that that cannot be overstated. That comment you just made, yeah, cannot be overstated because we have dogs literally in the kennel right now for training mm -hmm. that are not the right dog. Yeah, and they're not. Yeah, and so we're we have to have that conversation with them. Then, like, <laughs> thank goodness, none of those puppies are are puppies from us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, we have to have that conversation. Yeah, I'm like, look, like this dog doesn't have it. Right. And then all, everything you just went through, right? If you're like, hey, I want to get a dog now. I want to get a dog fast. I want to mm -hmm. get a dog. Well, now you're two years into it with a commitment. Yeah. Now what? Yeah. yeah. Wish you would have waited that extra. Six months to a year. Yeah. Now you have 13 years. Yeah, that's right. So control what you can <laughs> control. Yeah. Control what you can control. And please pray for yellow puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, so I am actually uh, going to spend some time in Missouri this coming weekend because we're, I'm taking my daughter, our daughter out <laughs> for the first time turkey hunting. She's so excited. Cannot it's be. the cutest thing ever. How excited she is. Well, she's been practicing with that little 410 yeah. and she's gotten really good at it. And, and mm -hmm. it like, she had to get to the point that she could swing and she could find the turkey, you know, target mm -hmm. and she understood where to shoot and she could. She did it. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of her. And so I just hope she gets an opportunity to pull the trigger on a, a real bird because she has worked her little tail off you know, yeah. to make that happen. And um, I know tomorrow will be an exciting day for her as we uh, we depart yeah. to head down uh, to Missouri. She's so, so excited. Yeah, I know. It's, it's great. Cute. So um, anyway, <clears throat> we'll come back with you probably next week with mm -hmm. another episode. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a fantastic week and control what you can control. Whether it comes to your life, your business, your dog, it's a great mindset to take into your day-to-day. -day. Control what you can control. The rest tends to take care of itself. So mm -hmm. have a fantastic week, everybody. Thank you, Whitney, for being here. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> See, that was one of those moments of like my brain's at half speed. I, I don't get it. Go listen to that song, Good Day. Forrest Frank. Forrest Frank. All right. Peace out, everybody. Peace. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Leave us a review on iTunes. And a special thank you to Yukonuba because without them, we couldn't do what we do here, bringing this information to you.